Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Outer Programming using Scala. This will hopefully be our last video on implementing our binary search tree. Uh, we need to finish off our remove method and then test it. So in the last video we started writing the remove method and we said we we're going to break it into two parts. We have one recursive function which finds the node we're removing uh, or doesn't find it in which case it just returns null and it does this recursively so it relinks everything as it comes back up uh, because that generally simplifies the logic. And then it relies on another function called remove max, uh, which is supposed to remove the maximum node to the left side uh, and give us, it's supposed to give us back three things, the key and the value from that node as well as the node value that we should link into on the left. So we'll see if this is uh, sufficient. I'm actually, uh, we'll, we'll see if we need to write a special case for this situation here where the thing on the left has no, has no children. That would actually be simple enough to do. We just pull that up in um, and it's possible that dealing with that in remove max could complicate our logic sufficiently, uh, but might not, we'll see. Okay, so what does remove max do? Well, it gets hold of a node in and <clears throat> it should continue walking down the right until it finds the, the thing that belongs down there. So if it, there is a right child, we need to go there. And if there isn't a right child, then this is the max. So if n dot right is equal to null, we're going to do one thing, else we're going to do something else. So what do we do if, and in case you weren't wondering, all of these errors are because we promised we'd return this three tuple and we haven't returned anything yet. Uh, so those will go away as soon as we, we have appropriate return values. So if, the, I think the easier case to write is the case where there is not, or where there is a right child, in which case I want to set in dot right equal to, I'll do a node, where once again we're going to do our recursive call here. So val, I'll do the kv node equals, I mean, yeah, uh, equals remove max of in dot right. So we go down to the right, we link back up that node and then we're going to return k comma v comma this current node uh, the n value not the one that was returned here that's supposed to be the right child for for this node we're supposed to return ourselves because we weren't removed so we're just going to link back in in the case where there is no uh, right child that means that we have found the node that, that is the largest, and what we need to do is return, oh, is this actually going to be that simple? I believe it is. Uh, we need to return in dot key, in dot value, and in dot left. Okay. So let's talk about this for, for a second. So okay, let's take the, sec the situation where we're moving the five, and we call remove max on the three. Well, three has a right child, so the the first time we invoke this version here, which calls remove max on the four. Four does not have a right child, so what does it do? Well, it remembers the four and whatever value is associated with the four, returns both of those as well as the left child, which is null. That left child gets passed back up to here, and on the call stack, that happens to be waiting, so that gets re called returned back up to here, so we get the four, whatever data was associated with the four, and a null into here, into the node that, was, that had the three in it. So now the three's right is going to be set to null, and that's exactly what we want. after. After doing this, the four is going to, this node is going to go away, so three's right should be set to null. 
And then we return the key and value, once again associated with the four, as well as the three node. So it returns this node here, along with the data that was associated with that, and that gets passed all the way back up to this call location. So then the fives left is set to be three, which is, once again, what we want. This should still continue pointing to that node. That's all fine. And then the value, the key four and the value for four are stored into the node that has the five. So this, there, this is now a null pointer here, and whatever data had been down here for the four is now at the five, and we're done, and everything's happy. So that's the situation where we're deleting a five. What about the situation where we're deleting the two? We want to make sure that this kind of edge case, because, or where we're deleting the three, because the two has no right children, I want to make sure that this edge case makes sense. Uh, and possibly, if, even if there were a one here, we still want to make sure that it's, that it's happy, though these will be two slightly different situations. So what happens in that situation? Well, we'd call remove max and we'd pass it the two node. So that comes down here, we get the two node. The two node has no right. So it immediately returns back with the key, the value, and it's left. Right now it's left is null. If there were a one, it's left would be the one. So we return back the data for the two and this pointer right over here. That goes back up and we wind up resetting on this node, giving it a left pointer, which was equal to what this returned. So in this case, null, that's what we want. And the two's data goes into there. So that seems reasonable to me. So at least tracing through this, this appears to be something that would work. So now we need to test this. Okay, so copy, we're going to say remove five, uh, and then I'm going to write some others. So how do we do this? Um, there are different ways that we could test this. Copy, paste. So after adding all of these, I want to do map minus equals five because that's, whoops, wrong, wrong function. I need to go down to this one, okay. So map minus equals five, and we uh, can then check, now it should not find anything when we call get, actually for the five, we should have a check here. Let's make sure this returns none. We technically haven't done that check previously, uh, so that was a deficiency in our testing. Uh, of course, we kind of knew that our tests weren't sufficient. But we want to make sure that everything that's in here previously is still found and the five is not found. It would also be nice if this iterator comes back and it gives us everything two through eight with the exception of five. So I want to filter for underscore not equal to five and then make sure that those are all in there. And we run the tests and they all pass because we talked about this being something of a special case. Let's also do the remove three and I will do a remove two. So when I do a remove three, this case turns to none. And this is sum five. And I wanna filter off three. And for remove two, uh, or remove four, really doesn't matter. Four, the four goes to none, sum five, and filter not equal to four. So given that small tree, well, those would have been our, the things we want. Uh, num but was sum four for remove four. Oh well that would be a problem wouldn't it uh let's make sure that our test is written correctly 
we add in all of our values and then we remove the four and this says that when we called get on four we're still returning something uh, definitely problematic uh, wonder if that would happen when we return the two so what happens in this situation where we remove the four we trace through the situation with the two and in fact let's go ahead and let's write the test for that just to make sure that remove two works copy paste remove two because we traced through that one and that one seemed to be fine but tracing through things by hand is not quite as good as this says failures two uh, so we have a, a failure in remove two and in remove three and there again okay so something is happening where even though I said to remove the two we are still finding the two so what happens in that situation oh, well the two should be one of our special cases up here where this doesn't even go down to the remove max this is supposed to be that because the two and the four both have a left child that is null so they should trigger this case right here and then they should return in dot right which should be linked in with the parent you know now that I'm looking at this we have ah here's the problem right here I am over aggressively returning in for everything and now we have errors because that shouldn't happen okay so the in dot right and the in dot left are return values. I want to keep those. This one should return in, and this one should return in, and this one should return in, but I had it returning in down here, which was covering a few too many cases. So we run our tests again. Oh, now remove four passed, but remove two didn't. Oh, and that's because I forgot to change the four to the two in the filter. So it's a good thing that that crashed. And okay, now the test is doing the correct thing. It works. So just to make it clear, that last bug that we had is because this recursive method has to return the right node to link back in. The way Scala works, remember the last expression that you have is what you return. <clears throat> so the in dot right and the in dot left here only get returned if there's nothing else that's that follows it after this if right here so if we go down and look what lines up i had the in down there and while in is what i want to return from three of the branches here i don't want to return it from these two so that completes our bst map uh, you could feel free to write uh, more significant tests of that We'll look briefly in the next video or talk briefly about how we could make an immutable version of this instead of the mutable version and what that would look like.